let's let's get to it. Let's get All to right. it. I'm in a okay, good okay. mood. I'm in a yes. great mood. Presented by Under Armour and Sleeper Fantasy. Welcome to Light Ears, Andy Lou. Game 50 of the season, the night before the Super Bowl. Yeah, and we are back. <laughs> I officially. This is the best I've felt about the Warriors since my birthday. I just want to, my birthday is November 3rd. Uh-huh. That's when they beat OKC, the uh-huh. first tournament game. Uh, the one where Steph had that insane floater over Chet. And uh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And, and they were six and two. Vibes were great. I, you know, again, it was my birthday. So I was feeling good. I might have had one extra beer. You know, what? One more than normal. <laughs> or, or 10. Or 10. Things were, yeah, one more than normal is the, the vibe and go for. I, I, everyone was a good mood. And then it's been kind of, three months of pain since then. And, you know, last couple of weeks I've, I've been feeling cautiously optimistic, but I didn't want to get hurt again. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to put myself out there. And 113, 112 went over the Phoenix suns with some shenanigans at the end. Yep. But you know what? You're calling I'm it back in. I'm You're back calling in. it. We're back in. We are back in. All right. Like your podcast is, uh, is absolutely 25 25 just get to 500 that was uh that was all the warriors fans needed that's all i needed the uh steph curry save us uh down the stretch in crunch time comes through yet again yet again i mean just what well, that shot really reminded me of the draymond uh, uh against okc you want to reference okc i'll reference to you another okc game where draymond won first steal then foul chet uh, and then the Warriors lost in overtime. Bradley Beal goes for a steal. <laughs> Steph turns seen, around. Seen a few too many of those. <laughs> oh, yeah. Steph turns around, hits a three. Now that was setting up to be another disgusting Warriors loss in crunch time. But, uh, Sam, I'm with you. I'm back in on this team, not because of the last minute of the game, but because of the first 45 minutes of the game, where it felt like, to me, the Warriors outplayed the Suns pretty emphatically throughout the majority of this game. And, and that's where I come in saying, all right, I'm starting to believe that this team is uh, at the very least going to be a good playoff team again versus I think a couple weeks ago we thought this team was, you know, maybe not even making the play in. So a we're back. Ago, a couple weeks ago, they felt like they were drifting in the wind, weren't sure where they're going. Right now, I buy this team. Uh, we could debate the upside of it, but they are a team I feel like I want to invest my time into. Yes, yes. I want to watch their games. I like what they're building. I'm curious where this goes. Uh, can we talk about Steph's shot first, though, right. before we get yep. into the big thing? The inbound, the swipe, catching it, turning, kind of an uncomfortable, awkward angle, shoots it like it's a free throw. And no other player in the NBA shoots that shot that comfortably i don't even know what you can say about this man like he's i think he's more comfortable shooting the ball in any scenario at age 35 soon to be 36 than he was in his prime like he just he just he's an assassin in these sort of situations like there's nothing that can bother him anymore who else in the nba makes that shot no one no one else makes that shot. Devin Booker gets that shot. He shoots his legs out and shoots his arms in the air <laughs> trying to do it. And I'm not trying to be like, I'm not trying to pick on him because, you know, I'm just, he, he's, he's a monster in his own way. And obviously they're playing him tonight. That's ah, come I'm on. That was good. That one, don't let you know, you know, like, great. I, it's no one, no one else shoots that and turns away while they're shooting it in crunch time. Beautiful. The way he did, you know? That was uh, that shot was I couldn't understand the angle on that shot against the Lakers. He hit a similar shot, but he kind of came off pretty cleanly. The crazy thing about this shot, he was like four feet behind the behind the arc and he shoots that thing. He shoots that thing like it's a normal shot for him because, you know, the thing with Steph, like he doesn't shoot like a jump, jump, jump shot. Like D book shoots a real jump shot in the air on those threes. The thing about Steph is he loads that thing so perfectly he can shoot it from the free throw line, the three point line or five feet or half court. Right. So like him shooting that three looks so freaking normal. Um, I'm with you. Maybe the only person that makes that shot is KD who ironically had a pretty rough game tonight, um, especially in crunch time. So I don't know, man, you watch these type of games. I was here saying that Steph was slumping a few weeks ago and now I'm sitting here watching him go for 60, 
42. Yeah. This, I, you know, this I know I like you, by the way. I never – I didn't make fun of you for that. I just kind of like let you say it, and I kind of um, you know, kept to myself a little bit. Like if it was someone I didn't like, I'd be rubbing your face <laughs> way more. And now he's back. And so I, I – um, I, these moments – you know, regardless of what happens with the Warriors this season, I do think these moments, like, I don't know, man, this is it's the best part of being a Warriors fan. This is, this is the best part of being a Warriors fan. You don't, you don't get, you don't get any of these guys like this and we'll get to Draymond, right? Like it's another guy where it's like, this was a peak Draymond game, just like this was a peak Steph game. Yeah. We saw this type of Steph effort against OKC back in the day, Houston, Portland. Yeah, it felt like a playoff game tonight. It was great basketball. It's really what it was. It was. Great basketball. It was, it was fun to watch. And, um, you know, the, the interesting part to me is like, okay, peak Draymond game defensively as good as I've ever seen him. The play down the stretch uh, summed it up. There was some, by the way, Nurkic, Nurkic tried so hard to bait him all night. You know what I mean? You try to get him fouled out of that game. And, and you know what? Like I, I, you rolled your eyes there. I would normally roll my eyes, but I'm also kind of like, eh, Draymond, this is what you get for being kind of an asshole for five years. But you but know? didn't he? But also didn't he? Didn't he lock Draymond into? You know we we always yeah. yeah we always talk about the greats. Now Draymond isn't MJ whatever right or Steph or LeBron or whatever. But you pissed him off and he made a he put his shoulder into Nurkic and had that lefty lay, which I don't think we've ever seen in our mm-hmm. lives. And then he does the too small thing on the ground. By the way, have we ever seen someone do a too small where they're smacking the ground? Don't think we've ever seen that. So shout out to Nurkic for bringing something back that I've never seen. But uh, it's funny because Draymond then dominated. The entire game yeah. from there on. I don't think we had, I don't think we heard from Nurkic the entire game after that. Draymond just took him to school offensively, defensively, everything. This is how this is how like Nurkic just can, can we say it? Like he he just he's soft. Like he's not he's not that guy. <laughs> right? He's in these type no, of games. He's he's, he's, not he, that guy. he's he's totally a um like he baits you a little bit, but yeah, he's not that guy. Yeah, not at all. Not at all. Um and, and I wanted to say this like peak Draymond. Peak Steph Curry. But what's it what's exciting about the Warriors is while they feel like the old Warriors, they also feel like a new Warriors team. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I'm really talking about guys like Kuminga and Pods. Uh, in general, um, it feels like they've actually adapted in a way. And I don't know where it's going once again, but like Kuminga's on a superstar breakout stretch. We'll see where it lands, but like over the last month, he's let's just say I'm not worried about Kuminga getting paid. Kuminga is about to get a max contract in a year. He's on that trajectory as we move forward, uh, more so than Jordan Poole was at this stage of his career. And then Pajemski, he's a rookie. Uh, you know, most minutes in the game, by the way, again for him. I understand why Steve likes to play him so much, but it's just like they add new elements to kind of the old Warriors team we knew. And that's kind of what you were hoping to see, which was adaptation and growth from the team. And that's, and, and in some ways, that's why it feels kind of like new and it feels like you can build upon us a little bit. Um, let's get to it because I think that's the perfect way to put it. Um, the struggles, I think I mean, perhaps you can't argue that this team needed the guys, the veterans to struggle so that these other guys can begin to take minutes because Curb was never going to go to the vets. Now, you can argue that they should have gotten those minutes last year, especially Kaminga, but we're here now. And it does feel like guys like Clay, who tonight played 24 minutes, right? And it was, wasn't was wasn't great. Guy, guys like uh, that and, and and Wiggins even, who just played 28 minutes. Who I thought was Chris, solid. Right? Chris, Chris Paul played zero minutes. But yeah, like, <laughs> it'll be bad. Samuel, don't worry. But I do, I do think like that was kind of the – that's kind of allowed these younger guys to to take the reins to the point that I think Pajemzi is going to close games more often than not. Kaminga's ninety nine point nine percent of games. I don't see a scenario where he doesn't even close anymore. Um, and so I think that's where we've gotten with, with this team and how quickly it happened is pretty crazy because uh, wasn't Kaminga out of the rotation a month and a half ago? Um, wasn't Pajemski was wasn't he like fourth string? Uh, point guard to start the season. Now I mean, he's the second best point guard. He's their second best point guard. They traded. Paul they traded. I know they traded Corey Joseph to save money, but they would not have done that if they did not think Pajemski could play. And once he hopped him in the depth chart, it's like, why are we even paying? What are we even support? doing? You know, what are, we, you know? What, are, what are we even doing? And um, that might swing this team. Maybe, maybe not this. Maybe they're too far away. And again, like I'm, I'm back in on them. Maybe they're too far away. But it swings this team next season. 
it, mm-hmm. it swings this team next season because you're going to go into next season and say, man, Kaminga takes another step. Pajemski, I think we we know he's going to take another step next year. I think it's pretty mm-hmm. obvious. He's going to figure out some more shit to do next season. But um, those two guys are – they closed the game. They closed the game against the Suns who – or what? Would you call them a second-tier title contender? Like, they're, they're, like that's a yeah. legitimate team, the Suns. The- the 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 Suns are the five or the six the six seed in the West. They're kind of where the Warriors want to be right now, which is out of the play in, uh, comfortably in the playoffs, trying to figure out how you get a step above it. As far as I'm concerned, you know, I know Denver is the four seed, but it's Denver and everyone else in the West. Yeah, and Phoenix is as mu- as good as anyone else as in anyone else in the West right now. So like, yeah, it's a real game. This is a real win. They went on the road. They played some soft teams. They got rolling. They came home. You know KD wanted this game. You know, he, like, come on, man. The national TV, going back to the Warriors, he's a competitive guy. This was a real game. This is what I need to see. I'm back in. Let's pay some bills. Yeah. <laughs> and the Light Years podcast is brought to you by, come on, on a night like this, we're getting it kicked off with, under Armour, Steph Curry makes you believe, makes us all believe that you can do anything. And the Curry 11s are specifically designed with ultimate bounce, grip, and stability to allow everyone to do their thing. New generations of ball players are coming up and showing the basketball world that the old rules do not apply. The future is exciting, fast, positive, and hungry. This NBA season, rock with your favorite player and rep his shoes on off the court. The Curry 11s are perfect for both the committed and casual ballers. The UA Warp Tech makes the shoe feel like it was designed for your feet. Locked in no matter what you do on the court. Stopping your tracks with dual-density UA flow, cushioning, and traction. An emergency break you don't even notice. Steph's 11th signature shoe. Steph's in the second decade of a sneaker career. Pulling colorway inspiration from the wonders of a positive and modernized future on and off the court. Take these kicks with you when when you leave the scrimmage and rep UA wherever you go. Do your thing. Change the game. Curry 11, future Curry, available now at currybrand.com. And we're brought to you by Sleeper Fantasy. Are you using the Sleeper app for daily fantasy basketball? Because we are. Be. Well, yes, absolutely. That's what I'm doing. So I won money last week. Uh, tonight, if you had taken the easy over on Steph and Devin Booker on points, rebounds, assists, you would have gotten paid out. So if you think you know basketball, try to turn your basketball knowledge into real money with the Sleeper app. Ultimate fantasy sports app that can turn game day into payday. Just download the Sleeper app and pick more or less on your favorite players. With more stats than any other daily fantasy app, just choose two or more of your favorite players from pregame or live. Pick more or less from the predicted stats, and you can win up to 100 times your uh, your money if your picks win. Use promo code LIGHTYEARS. You'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms used for details. Currently operational in over 25 states. Check out Sleeper today. You know who's back today? GP2. I'll give him a little love. Like, is he not the ultimate teammate? Is he not the ultimate, just like, first off, top five point of po- top five, uh, three, like point of attack defender. The top two. A, yeah. Top I, I mean, maybe the best, like, honestly, like a monster in that capacity. But I think it's more than that. Like, his energy is infectious. They yep. feel yep. like, the Warriors, when he plays, they have so much fun when he's out there. I counted three separate Pajemski to GP2 like lobs. Classic Warriors. Pods is a warrior where he spams the same play too many times because like it gets a crowd going. Like that's such a Warriors move to do right there. Uh, but like it, it really is like his energy, the smile, the infectiousness, like it gets everyone going. And like I think you and I both agree. The Warriors are the Warriors when they're defending and getting out running, and he kind of exudes that energy. So it's good to see him back out there. Top top one uh, vibes player from the comments is, is the perfect way to put it because the game completely changed the moment he came in. And I actually wouldn't even say like – I wouldn't even say he's like a fan favor or anything like that because he's literally that important to this team. He, like, I, yeah. To me, like he should have – and again, this is – yeah, he's, he's, he's not smiley. He could play. Yeah. Well, it's, it's fan favorite smiley. It's funny. But, like, you know, he's not most spates, right? Like, like the guy can right, move. Right, like, yeah. like he should have closed tonight. Like, he should have closed because he can guard Devin mm-hmm. Booker. Like, that's how good he is, is that he he closed NBA Finals games. That's how good he is. They needed him back, which uh, I, I guess I, like, kind of didn't see it coming that he was coming back. He's been out for so long that when they say said he was coming back yesterday, I was like, oh. Okay, GB2 has got perfect for Devin Booker and, uh, and Bradley Beal. He was guarding Kevin Durant. For the majority of the game, 
uh, and he was pushing him out the paint, which is the classic small guy against a big guy who doesn't really want to bang down there, right? Like, right. like Le- KD's not the LeBron. <laughs> if you put GP2 on LeBron, it's over. But if you put GP2 on KD, he's shoving him out. Then his arms are really long. He can contest jump shot a little bit, yeah, right? A so, bunch of fadeaways, yeah. So on a yeah. fadeaway. So I thought, you know, the <laughs> offense, he had a bunch of ducks, made a three. Um, he's – him and Pods are the two guys that – exude the everything's always happy and you kind of need that on the court i think there's a lot of bad energy with this team sometimes like especially with clay thompson especially with draymond green uh and we'll get to draymond tonight no bad energy but like those two guys are 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 pretty rough sometimes when things are going bad pods and gp2 they could be down 20 you couldn't tell yeah you couldn't tell it's it's a good way to put it because clay and he had a rough game tonight but clay gets in his own head yeah um Wiggins oh yeah I forgot about him <laughs> not a Wiggins goes with the vibe of the team sure if the vibe's down he's going to be down if the vibe's up he'll be up he's not a he's not a leader he's never been a leader that's fine Kuminga kind of the same thing he's yeah. a little more aggressive but he's young but he's young um, yeah, right right and to your point like Draymond's a hothead in some ways he does like bring a certain vibe to the team that is absolutely necessary, but you do need a couple guys who are just constantly going to be like, it's okay, guys, let's just keep going. You know, yeah. like the guy who I always think of with that is Sean Livingston, mm-hmm. Mr. Positivity, just always like no reason to be mad. We can, we can fight through this. We'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Iguodala to a lesser extent. Cause he's a little, a little, a little bit of an asshole, an asshole. but like yeah, same, yeah. same thing, but like they brought a um, stabilizing energy more than anything. And like, uh, I feel like that's what you're saying. Like pods and GP two, they're just, they're, they're next play up. They're not going to get mad that like something bad happened the last three plays. They're just going to be like, all right, guys, let's keep moving. You know, yeah, like, let's it, not dwell on it. It does make the team so much more fun to watch. And the other thing is guys, both those guys have great IQ, incredible <laughs> IQ pods turned the ball over today, just kind of fell out of his hands. And I was like, damn, it's the last turnover I saw from pods. Like, Two and a half weeks ago, like what, what, what did that even happen? And the guy's going in transition at 100 miles per hour. Same with GP two, and um, I, I think this team, if you talk about them figuring something out, what makes what makes this team so great is not like, oh, we have three all stars, right? We have we have KD, Booker, and Beal. No, nah, it's never been like that. It's always been the we're gonna put some goons around Steph. We're gonna have Draymond. Be a f- I don't know what that was tonight. That was Pete Draymond. Just be the normal. I'm going to toe the edge. I'm going to toe the line all the way, but I'm not going to do anything too crazy, and he's also going to ball out. Uh, you get that, and you get the role players playing all around them. That's always been what the Warriors have uh, have, have been successful, and um, I don't know. It's it's cool to have those guys now with uh, with Pods, with uh, with Kaminga, and uh, I mean, honestly, like Lester Quinones did some, did some good stuff tonight as an energy guy. I did not know he was going to be an energy guy, right? And he's just, he's just an amazing... He's just out there diving for loose balls, which yeah. again, when you're when your vets are struggling, which the Warriors have had vets struggle this season, you need those guys. No, I mean he he seems to understand he's a two way guy, and he's fighting for his job, and he's pretty cool. uh, he's playing with like the energy that like Damian Lee and Juan Toscano Anderson yeah. played with, which yeah. is like what you need to do when you have that role. Like you can take a shot, you can you can get a little saucy when you get a, when open shot, but like you have to bring the energy that way the whole way, and I. I like Lester. He's going to get converted. It's look, they're going to wait until the 22nd to convert Lester Kinyonis to save a little tax money. We all know it. it that he's going to be on a two way for the next 12 days, but whatever. Um, but I kind of like him. I, I feel like we'll, we'll dive into this next week, I think, but it feels like the Warriors have are starting to establish a little bit of a pipeline with him and Guy Santos and like guys, Trace, like, not that they're world beaters, but just like developing guys who fit their system. Well, well yeah, this which isn't ma- the which yeah, matters. this isn't the NFL, right? Like third rounders mm-hmm. can't become superstars. Like in the NFL, no. I, I think if you can get second rounders and undrafted guys to be rotational pieces, like the Miami Heat, like that's pretty sweet. No, <laughs> that's pretty. That's, that's, that's the goal. That's the goal. Right. Perfectly. Yeah. Right. If you can get if you can get if you can get guys to be like Caleb Martin, like. You, you're killing it. That's Duncan you're Robinson. It. All these guys that they just throw out yeah. there that are just like, yeah, they're not superstars. But uh, who's the guy that got paid by the Cavs? It's, it's, the name is escaping me right Max now. Max Struess. Yeah, Max Struess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like guys like that. And um, I, uh, Quinones is interesting. I, he plays a lot better defense than, than I thought, which is which is interesting. He, he's 
He's got the sure. Jordan pool, like, you know, kind of dribbles a little too much, but Hey man, like he's, he's got a ton of confidence. Um, um, I, I think that bench unit is, is pretty interesting. Sarge is the only guy where I'm watching and I'm just like, Ooh. I actually thought Looney played good tonight. I kind of surprised he didn't play at all. I like in half. I thought he was fine. I, I would have liked to see him. You see know, him. my thoughts on Sarge are Sarge is, uh, he needs his Sarge is the classic. Steve's going to play him 20% too much. Hmm. Like he's not a bad player. I think he can help a team, but they went up seven points with Sarge at center. And Steve should have pulled him there because he's a guy you throw out there for three to four minutes. He's going to compete his ass off. He's going to hit some shots and move the ball. But if you leave him out there for six to seven minutes, they're going to run an ISO at him over and over again and pick on him a little bit. Uh, and, th- and that's just like the classic, like Steve likes him and he wants to play him more than he should. Uh, and, and instead of getting like the solid, you know, 10 minutes of Sarich where he helps your team, you get like 15 minutes where you're like, all you well, remember is that the, the end of it where you're just like, oh, dude, what are you doing? We've seen that one. I, I just, yeah. I, I think Looney's playing better. I'd like to see him more. I, mm-hmm. Looney, Looney playing better makes me really, really happy. Um, can we talk about Draymond? We doing Draymond? Cause that's, let's do, let's do Draymond and Clay. One. We got yeah. hit on both of them. And then we, we okay. keep moving. All right. Uh, we'll start with Draymond. Ah, uh, was that his best game of the season? Probably, probably. I mean, he's, <laughs> I keep thinking about this. How good would they be if he was okay. if he didn't get into that BS at the beginning <laughs> of the season? But then the other part of me is what do his legs look like if he's playing like this in November? You know, so that's anyway, true. That's, that's actually a that's a great point. <laughs> that's a different that's question. A great point. Um a lot more, a lot more loony out there if that's the case. Um yeah, I thought completely locked in coming in, gets into it with Nurkic off the bat, starts screaming at the crowd, not screaming at the ref. So I was like, oh. And then he ends the game going at Kevin Durant after getting a stop on him at the end. And that, I was like, man, he found the dog. He found the dog again. I don't know what happened. I don't know what he did in therapy. I don't know what I don't know what he did for a month. But he didn't even come close to getting kicked out tonight. Bro. No bullshit. No weird. No weird like hacks hitting people's head. No kicking dicks. I, th- I, nothing I think crazy, he just balling. I have a uh, I have a two year old son who uh, is a menace at all times with me. And I feel like he only responds to when he knows he's going to get into real trouble. I feel like that's Draymond in some ways. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, that, that's a terrible analogy, but that, no, that's, that's well, for the, for the, for the listeners. That's how, you know, I woke up at 5am today. Uh, <laughs> um, I think Draymond is the reason he's a great playoff player is the reason he gets into trouble. Uh, he needs to like be up against the wall yeah. to like lock in. Yeah. Like yeah. he can't lock in against Tuesday against Sacramento. He's not impressed by De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis. He needs to know that he's gonna get kicked out of the NBA if he doesn't lock yeah, in. I was gonna say, <laughs> well, he. I was gonna say he now he's starting to lock in regardless of who he's playing on every single night. Um, but man, you know, you watch the help defense that he's playing. He saved a couple buckets there in crunch time offense really is where he makes things yeah. go like offense is really i think everyone always talks about the great defense but he is underrated offensively okay. four on three gets kaminga a dunk gets a screen up for steph coming off in crunch time obviously to hit that game winner um he's making the right decision tonight every single time he's going right by nurkic playing the as it says speed five where he's just trying by him for layups he just what he had a reverse layup wait no yes he did he had a reverse it was like an up and under, left side. Then he scores on the right side. I'm just sitting there. I'm like, did we did we turn the clock back seven years? What is he going does, on here? Like, like, What's going on here? I'm glad you call it out because it's been noticeable into last year. He just, I don't know if he's healthier, but he looks a little quicker than he used to, right? Like, and that and that's like a big difference with finishing, right? So yeah, I just. I think his best game. He really only played forty minutes. He got in foul trouble a little bit, um, which is why I think we saw we saw Lurk, uh, Sarge for a lot. But uh, man, I thought this was his best game of the season. Um, the tech was perfect, pinnacle, pinnacle of Draymond, where he gets a tech. But by the way, actually, now that before we we go to the next part, but I thought the rest were good in the first half, terrible in the second half. And uh, Sam, I, I I 
before we go to Clay, Doris Burke is rough. Really, really rough. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. All right. That's it. (laughs) Oh, my Um, my goodness. The broadcast has no feel. (laughs) Like I don't, I don't know what else to say. You always uh, say it better than me. You always give a better analysis of, of what I'm trying to say. It's a good way to. No, nah, no, nah, that's not true at all. Um, but how do I how do I describe this? Uh, I feel like Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy could be incredibly annoying old guys on the couch, but they met you at the common denominator. And then watching the current broadcast, I just it feels disjointed. It feels like I'm being sold like corporate gobbledygook at all times. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. it feels like the messaging is coming down, and I don't know. It's not for me. That's why I watch games on playback with my with my friends in Argentina. Uh, I'm becoming fluent in Spanish, just to be clear. Let's go. I will be by the end of the season. We're gonna be potting. Uh, I think I saw you had a couple thousand in there too. So look at that. Look at that (laughs) plug. Look at that plug. Well done. Well Uh, done. Do we got another read before we get to Clay? Oh, yeah. Let's. Okay. Let me do one more. All right. Uh, Light Years Podcast. We are brought to you by Factor. Factor's back. Factor's delicious, ready to eat meals make you eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre pre prepared, chef crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You will have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help you make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. What are you waiting for? Get started today and have a few good week of meals to go. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, upscale options done easily. Flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing 6 to 18 meals per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. So head to factormeals.com slash lightyears50 and use lightyears50 to get 50% off. That's code lightyears50 at factormeals.com slash lightyears50 to get 50% off. Oh, So 24 minutes. Two of ten, five points. I have Clay Thompson tonight. I'm I'm not gonna I'm gonna I'm just gonna be honest with this. This sucks. Like I I really don't like going into this. Um I think if I'm if I'm gonna be honest with you, I appreciate the fact that Steve Kerr is not st- calling him out or oh, like yeah. Yeah. putting him on the spot, just kind of like silently moving away from him. Um, And honestly, did you have a problem with any of clay shots? <sighs> Not really. I can think really? of like maybe one where I'm like, all right, it's, 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 you're chasing a little there, but like most of them were good shots. He just not, he's, he's just not hitting anything. Like, I don't know what you expect. Open feet set brick, you know, like I kind of trust if he sticks with his process and he doesn't push it, he could start making those a little bit, you know, like, cause I don't think he forgot how to shoot the basketball. I think he's in his own head pressing a little bit right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also thought he did a decent job defensively today. He was, he was solid because he didn't, you know, you're not guarding Booker or, or really Beal. He kind of stuck him on 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 the bigs. Right? They put him on Eubanks, Bull Bull, um, and, and KD a little bit, made, made life a little easier for him. Um, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you on the – there's no need to say anything about him publicly, I think, anymore. He, he cares so much more than – than really anyone else anyway. Um, so he, he doesn't need extra motivation. I, th- I think you can see how much hurt he's going through out there. Um, he hit a three. They caught a bullshit offensive foul on Draymond. Um, then he has a wide open three the next possession, right? And he overthinks it and the thing the thing comes off the edge, right? And so, yeah, I'm watching it. I kind of feel bad for him. That's that's where I'm at. I'm hoping that it's just a slump and he's just mm-hmm. starts he just starts nailing threes. Um, I know they start s- sitting him in that back to back because I think just kind of I think with fatigue. Well, I mean, illness. I wanted well, to. I was I was gonna say this, but 
you know he's played the second most minutes on this team this year. Yeah. Like, wow. I was going to be like, the coaching staff isn't doing him a favor running him into the ground when he's probably not the athlete he used to be. So, yeah. but I don't even I don't I don't want to go into that because that's not that's not the issue tonight. Tonight wasn't an oh. issue of him playing thirty eight to forty minutes. Yeah, I mean they did that. Steve Kerr did it perfectly, which I also got to mention. I thought Steve Kerr did a great job, uh, especially with timeouts. I mean, just, uh, end of the day, sometimes it's so easy to just kind of with him. It just he just lets guys play. But tonight he caught timeouts at the end of the quarter every time. Put Draymond back in. Put Wiggins back in. Uh, put Steph back in offensively. Um, I, I thought, and and really the last few games he's been. He's been kind of moving away from Clay, really, no matter what. I don't, I don't know how you can't close with pods in a lot of these games. Uh, tonight, probably better to close with GP two, but I don't think you can argue against that. Maybe GP two is just on a minutes limit, and um, I just, I, I think Steve's finally got the, um, he's finally got the uh, really like the confidence to bench these guys. Uh, especially when you look at Clay, because of of what's happened throughout the first forty games of the season, and I think that's and, making his coaching life a little bit easier. I mean, yeah, and I would have liked Steve to get there quicker, but I also get it. You know, I get it. You know, like you really gonna bench Clay when you're eight and ten, not even twenty games into a season, when they're like champions and that sort of thing. Like it's rough, you know. So, um, I do I, think Clay still has a very important role to play for this team going forward, but there's no way, there's no way to get around it. Like he's not playing well. And if he's not going to hit shots, like you can't keep him out there. And that's just reality. That it is what it is. It, this is going to continue. Um, and, and it kind of, it's on clay to, you know, I wonder, though, I wonder if Chris Paul coming back helps him. I, I wonder if that's – and then you know how I feel about Chris Paul. <laughs> but but I, I do wonder if maybe if it's one thing, maybe you make the sacrifice, right? Maybe, maybe him coming back gets clay shots. He's a great passer. He's still a great passer. Chris Paul's still a great passer. Now, the Bro, I can see stuff, how much this hurts you. <laughs> I'm trying to – like, we're not – none of us are happy, man. None of us are yeah. happy sitting here watching clay struggle. Um, uh, it, it it's it's rough. So, if you were to argue, you know, tonight Kenyonez plays nineteen. I'd imagine he probably doesn't play if Chris Paul comes back. You can argue Chris Paul makes life a little bit easier for Sarge and and Clay Thompson. So I think that's the argument. I think that's it. So hopefully that helps Clay. I don't even know when Chris Paul's coming back. Do you know? Like, are we talking about weeks here? Are we talking about coming soon? Because God damn, I think he's he back. At, I mean, they haven't released anything. He's doing some shooting work right now. They have a game. Like, I'll start break. I'm just being realistic with it. Like they play three more games before the all-star break. Okay. Their next game after the all-star breaks, the 22nd or the 23rd Okay, feels realistic that it's after that. Like he's not going to play in Utah on Monday, you know? So, yeah, yeah. okay. Okay. It feels realistic that it's that maybe it's a little longer, but I don't know. He, he's playing like the reality is clay needs to hit shots. He did. You are correct. He played good defense, particularly on KD a little bit tonight. And this is a good matchup for for Clay defensively. But if he can't hit shots, I don't know what he does in offense for you. You know. So yeah. yeah. All and right. I will say. I will say this. They need him to start hitting shots. Like, um, I was. I shared this with you a little bit pregame. Uh, if you look at the playoff standings. The teams who are currently in the sixth seed, the Sacramento Kings, the New Orleans Pelicans, the Phoenix Suns, they're on 48 to 49 win pace. We'll call it 48 wins just for the sake of this segment, okay? That means for the Warriors to get to 48 wins, they need to finish the year 23 and 9. They do have one of the easier schedules in the league. Strength of schedule has them, I think, at 26th currently. But they need to run through the West to get out of the plan, which I don't know how easy that is right now. Like it's uh, it's a lot to go there, and so they Clay have the easiest schedule in the remaining. That's insane. Clay has Clay has a role to play in terms of getting there because if I was to ask you, Andy, 
what do you think is the single biggest thing they need to, you know, essentially run the table the rest of the way? Like what we're talking about is you got to win at like a 55 to 61 pace <laughs> from now till the end of the year to avoid the play in. Like, yeah, you play the Spurs three times, but the point is you got to win 24, 23, 24, 25 games with only 32 left. Can I be the bad guy? What's that? They're not going to win 24. They're not going to go 24 and 9. Or it's 23 and 9 now. Like, come on. Why not? Because, you know, Steph's going to get hurt and miss a week. You know, Draymond's going to get hurt and miss a week. Like, these guys are old. I, I don't know. It's just, it's just, what if we, what if, the last time we saw this team go 24 and 9 was two years ago? I, I know you're trying to get to the clay point, but I just, I, I hear I just, you. That's, that's really hard. I know it's, a, it's a, anyway. You, I, I'm the bad guy. I can't believe it. I'm the bad guy. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean like, he's back out. <laughs> I'm not saying you're you're inaccurate there. I, I guess I'd say for it to happen, right? That you you need uh you need three things to play in your favor. One, you need fortuitous health with Steph and Draymond. Yeah. Two, I think you need Wiggins to continue on a consistent streak. He was not good offensively tonight, but he was good defensively. Minus Very that foul. Good. Yep. Uh, and he's playing with like I can live with him being inconsistent offensively if the energy is like this. Like for me, if he's bringing defensive energy, I'm going to live with the fact that some nights he's five for thirteen and some nights he's eight for twelve. You know, like that's fine by me. I don't consider him a great offensive player. I need him to be a great defensive player on the consistent basis. Uh, and the third one is is probably Clay. Clay has to start hitting shots in general. Uh, those are the three things I need, and then I feel very comfortable that they can actually make that kind of run. Because I th- here's here's the reason I say that. I think GP2 is going to bring energy. I think Pods are going to play like the way he's played all year. I think Kuminga is going to do what he does all year because he's young, he has the legs, and he can get to the rim on anyone at any time. You know, uh, it's really a question about those veteran guys who matter to you. If they're going to bring it every night, or they're, you know, are we going to get Wiggins of the first forty games? Where it's like, what the fuck is this? You know, or are we going to get Clay that we've seen recently, which is like, for kicking a max contract, is he going to be a contract? You know, yeah, yeah. I, I think the Clay one's probably the one that's uh, furthest away from happening. Um, yeah, I, I think I think Wiggins. Um, he's been good for a while now. I wouldn't say great, but he had a pretty big rebound, big, big, um, uh, put back dunk tonight, uh, a couple of big boards. And he was, dude, he was awesome defensively. Uh, he's him. I think it just, life is a lot easier for him when he's got Draymond and GP two. So he's not your guy offensively. Cause he's not your, he shouldn't be your guy defensively. But when you get two other elite defenders with Wiggins, man, is he good, man, is he good. So, uh, I'm with you. The one with Clay is probably the furthest one. But then there's a shot that Clay comes out right before the All-Star break and just bangs off seven threes in a row. Because I, I do think for them to be realistically, if okay, let's say they do go 24 and 9. I'm not sure you can do that asking Pajemski to play 35 minutes a game. Like, regardless of how great he's been, it's a lot of minutes and a lot of responsibility for a rookie. It, it's a lot. They, they yeah, need, most, they need most minutes on the team as a rookie is – Generally, a lottery team thing. Yeah, <laughs> right. And I mean, they have good players around him. But again, I tell everyone, they always talk about it's like, dude, he's not LeBron. Like he just, he just can't. Like, they, they, he's only going to be so good right now. They still, they can't have Clay playing like a super league, uh, below average NBA player he, if they want to, yeah. if they want to go twenty four wins down down the stretch. I, I think you're right. I think the biggest one, it's going to have to be Clay. It's going to have to be Clay. He's going to have to go on a heater or just go back to being who he is. Or at least like who he is a year ago, even not that long ago. I think it's. I still think it's. I think it's Wiggins more so. Um, I think it's more sustainable for them to light it up defensively and live with the fact that outside of Steph, offense can, you know, be a little consistent. Not everyone can shoot the ball. You know that sort of thing. I think if Wiggins locks in defensively with Draymond with Kuminga with what they got going, they can rattle off wins. Um, I think Clay having to find a shot and be that is like matters for them doing anything in the playoffs, period. But in terms of like going on a run, I'm a lie. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stick with my Wiggins point. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, you know, 
Wiggins, Wiggins is. I'm sure not being traded takes a <laughs> load off his shoulders. The Warriors are back. The Warriors are back. The Warriors are back. All right, let's uh let's get some callers. I'll call call that after that. Let's get a guy Will up here. By the way, Andy, do I see a Niners jersey in the background? Um, wow, you got a good eye. I mean, my, my what up, old... y'all? I'll go after. I'll do it after. So, Will. Oh, great win, man. Just, just Steph Curry, man, doing what he does. And I just got to say, <laughs> Nurkic, you're a clown. You are a clown, bro. Did the too little on Draymond. Got it done back to him. And ultimately, Dre got the last laugh at the end of the day. Ended the game almost with a triple-double, by the way. Almost. Uh, Nurkic ended with six points and six rebounds. Bum stats. Uh, but no, um, yeah, I've been listening to everything you guys are saying. Um, I think we got a really good shot at uh, going into the All-Star break. You know, finishing. I mean, it'd be great to finish. What would it be, nine and one or eight and one? Um, that would be wonderful. But uh, I don't know, man. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be tough uh, to try and get out of this playing situation. But I don't know the way that we've been playing. Uh, I think it's definitely possible. The only two things I will say I did not like about tonight was a little too much Sarge at the five, even though it was like a few short minutes. I felt like. Kerr was trying to get away with. Uh, let's see how long I can stretch keeping Steph. Always, on the bench. he's he's always good for like a minute or two longer than you want. Where I'm like, Steve, come on, man. Literally, bro. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I I don't have too much else to say, man. Just want to enjoy this win for all those uh, haters talking about Steph's not clutch. You know, you can kiss our ass, bro. <laughs> Appreciate you, Will. Have a great evening. You too, man. Thanks, Will. Try to bring Andy. We didn't, we didn't talk about before Will gets out of here. How excited are you for tomorrow? Where, where's your head at? Where's your head uh, at? And by the way, I see all the rest of the callers. We're gonna get to you. Don't worry. We'll get to you guys. I uh, for the listeners that are listening to this for the Super Bowl, I just threw up a Kaepernick jersey. I'm at my old. Uh, I'm trying to bring the vibes. I'm at my my mom's house tonight. Um, in my it's, oh, I'm in my old room. Those aren't vibes. They, they lost when you were there. <laughs> they did. They did. He was the uh, <laughs> last good quarterback the Niners had before Brock Purdy. So there's that. But um, I do not want to see a replay of that. Scene. I, I'm excited, Sam. I, I think the Niners are a better team, but it just it, it just wouldn't surprise me if they lost. It's just this is kind of their best shot, right? They've kind of got everything. Their whole defense is healthy. The offense is healthy. Brock's awesome. If you know Trent Williams is there, like just everybody's there. How long? How long are the Niners going to have this great of a team? I don't know. Things move fast, and um, I just think they're the better team. They're the better team. Please win. That's all. I don't even have analysis. The brother team, please win, please. I'm praying. What What's the Super Bowl plan? Uh, dude. So my uh my buddy has a has a baby shower. So I'm in Walnut Creek. You love that. I'm in Walnut Creek, and I will be in Walnut Creek watching the game. If the war, if the Niners win, I will be somewhere in San Francisco, blacked blacked out, drunk somewhere. Maybe you're watching the, the game. You're watching the game in Walnut Creek. <laughs> I'm watching it in San Francisco, and you're watching it in Walnut Creek. <laughs> We've switched spots. What, what the what fuck said? is this, man? <laughs> what the fuck is this? You think I'm I was, happy I was out there? I was out there visiting my parents, uh, giving them grandparents love today. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, I, I planned everything so I could be at my buddy's house yeah. in the city tomorrow. Part of me sitting here going like, man, they win. I don't know how I feel about that. You're going to stay out there? Oh, wait. That's right. I, I, sometimes I yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah but, sometimes I forget. No, I'm not Raiders. I it <laughs> but what I was going to say is, um, I mean, it, it, look, it's only 20 minutes from where I live right now. So it's not really that big a deal in one way or another. But I'm, I'm, I've am i I've, pulled together all the stops to give myself a full day. Yeah. Andy's going to stadium pub. What is I'm that? What is, the, that? what is that? <laughs> uh, it's a spot the locals go to. In Walnut Creek, I'll put it that way. It's not cool. It's in no way cool. We're gonna get some. We get some text back from that one. Um, I mean, I mean, look, man, they win. I'll be in the city. I'll be. In, I just gotta figure out my Ubering plans after because I'll be drinking. But um, 
They, what do you they think? Win, you think? They win. You're about to pay five hundred dollars for an Uber to get to oh, the city. Hundred but... <laughs> percent. You know, worth it. And then I'll pay another five hundred for whatever shots I can get out there. I mean, they're the better team, right? They, they have to. Come on. I think it's. A, I think it's a pretty even game. Um, yeah. They are the. They are the better team on paper, but I, I just don't like yep. Patrick Mahomes this yep. single game. Like it's. I know. He's, he's. I know. He's the one. He's the one. I know. If it was Josh Allen, I'd be like, it's over. If yeah. it was Lamar Jackson, I'd be like, I'm I'm printing shirts. I'm gonna be the first one to sell them on Amazon. Um, but but yeah. Mahomes, he kind of terrifies me. Uh, so. I know. I know, you know, they the last time that he lost in a Super Bowl, it was kind of right. He kind of just didn't have any any guys around him, right? So anyway. All right, who's next? Archie, my man. Archie, my man. What's, What's up? up? What's up, guys? Great win. Don't really have to rehash too much of what was already said. Uh, the refs were terrible in the second half. I think I'm really tired of getting the inadvert whistles that we keep getting. It just seems like we get all the uh, what is experimental up calls. Like, what's up with that? You know? I will say this, though. Uh, Sam, Andy, y'all didn't want to really give it too much uh, verbiage, but I will. Doris Burke, her commentary... <laughs> Like I watch a I watch a lot of like late night games, specifically like the Lakers games, because I'm East Coast. And like it's very clear who she's rooting for, like when you listen to her commentary. And I was just listening to it and I'm like, she really wants the Suns to win this game. Like everything that she kind of alluded to during like the entire game just seemed to be in benefit for them. But I thought the funniest thing was at the very end when Steph took the three, uh Pods had the what was considered the terrible pass at first. And it, when I saw it in real time, I was just like, yeah, it was kind of a tough pass. But if you look at it again, if he puts that ball anywhere else, uh, it's probably a steal from Bill. And I think even in real time, as Doris was kind of saying that, she could have kind of realized that within the game. But it's it's very cringeworthy just kind of hearing her through the course of our games because it just feels like, we got to deal with the refs. We got to deal with the Suns' big three, and then we got to deal with Doris. But great game. Glad stuff hit the three. Um, Draymond kind of stole the GP2 return game, but great game. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate you, Archie. No, uh, no, uh, no, um, uh, no critiques. No critiques. Definitely, Definitely not. Definitely not. Just of it. So we'll leave it there. We get an echo yeah, on dudes. Him, though. Yeah, I don't know what's with that echo. Anyway, sorry, go. What's up, man? Yeah, dudes, I just got to comment on the refs as well. Because did we mention that end of the end of the game whistle? Like, and Doris is going like, oh, that's where he, he – he got him right there. He got him right there. And I'm like, where? Like, where? They're just like going both of them for the ball. Well, the, the one that's really like, bad – the one that's really bad is Draymond getting fouled by Booker. And then they're yeah. going – Oh, this is great refing. It's like while wow, they're showing a replay of the foul where, where Booker's just smacking his hand and back. And I'm just sitting there like, what the fuck are we watching? What what, what are we Yeah, it's 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 pretty ridiculous. There's been a lot of real bad calls over the last couple games in particular. Um, I mean the the offensive call changes that have happened like on on Steph like, what what is going on here guys like where where's your training but whatever it's it's fine and I just want to comment on Kaminga really quick like it star it it's really funny how everybody's like oh he's playing so well and then I remember like the preseason everybody was comment, commenting on him playing so well and he just didn't get any time at the beginning of the season and it's like uh, it's like you you said recently, I think, in the last uh, show, just just that like er, the coaches are getting complimented, but it's been obvious the whole time. Like he was playing super super good the preseason. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's what it is. I'm happy. Five hundred fifty games. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, have a good Appreciate night. you, man. Cool, 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 cool. Indeed. Cool. Let's go with the. Fun, man. Tomorrow's going to be fun. Fun. Yeah, that's one way to put it. Yeah, well, it's hey a little more stress-free for me. What's up, Dylan? 
Not much, man. Obviously, I'm super hype after that win. Um, Steph is still him. That uh, Steph gravity on that last Draymond layup was just insane. Like, I mean, it wasn't quite like KD getting an open dunk level of gravity, but it was still just like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's the best dude in the NBA. You have to guard him with two to three guys. Um, other thing I just want to mention, we were talking about in the, the playback chat, and I think you guys kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier. Our remaining schedule is not tough. Like, we've got a half dozen games against really good teams, maybe, right? I mean, am I miscounting here? And then the rest of them are – I'm not saying they're all easy wins. We'll lose a couple. But we got a good shot to get get, get pretty good record here. So I'm going to leave you guys that. I appreciate it. It's one of those things where, okay, they, they kind of shit away half a season, but they have a they have a real chance to gain momentum and see where it goes going forward. Appreciate you calling in, buddy. Um, you guys are really on top of the schedule stuff, huh? I know you texted me this morning, but man, that is... I, I mean, honestly, I dug into it earlier today. Uh, I know they had a tough schedule to open the season, but, you know, go feel with like it now. I feel like it's been a tough schedule all season, and then I kind of think about it, and I'm just like, well, is it a tough schedule all season, or are the Warriors just not good? Right, right yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, they're always playing good teams. It's like, that's what happens to your bad team. When they're yeah. the bad one, every team is a good team. Uh, um, they're just not favored any of these games. Oh, because they're the 23rd best team in the league. That's um, I am looking at the schedule now. Um, I'm seeing some Charlottes, seeing some San Antonios. I'm seeing some Memphises. I am seeing some uh, some Torontos. I'm seeing some Washington. So, so you guys have Jeremy, a point. Some Jeremy Sohan coming through. <laughs> uh, a Doja Cat, as they're saying. Uh, I'm seeing some Portlands. I'm seeing some, you know, in mm-hmm. Utah. Utah's good. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, yeah, you know, we'll see. <clears throat> What's up, man? What's going on, y'all? Sir, what's saying in there? So I just want to say, out of the top four teams, I don't really tripping on nobody besides the Clippers. I don't know what you guys think. Wow! Ooh. Wow! Clippers. Okay, that's interesting. So besides um, the Clippers, I would say I still say Denver, man. I still say I'm because they did it last year. They did it last year, and I just. I, Kawhi, Kawhi is Kawhi, but like Paul George and and Harden, like I don't know, man. I've seen them in May a lot of times do some weird things. It's true. I just think that Denver, they're good, but we are gonna run Jokic just out of the game at one at some point. He can't run. He can't defend. So that's that's my take. But other than that, who's having a better year, uh, Jordan Poole or Clay? Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> Holy, uh, Bob Myers, <laughs> oh. touche. Appreciate you, man. Have a good one. Did you see Bob Myers' quote today to before the game? Yeah, I didn't want to slander him too hard okay. tonight, but um, but yeah, I did. I love Bob. I've I'm out, I, I told you, I'm out on him. I think he's, I think he's sneaky. Embarrassing. I don't think he's, I don't think he's who you think he is. He's apparently not. I mean, he he went on for those who don't know. It's funny because you actually sent this in our chat. But uh, uh, <laughs> Bob, <I'll> pull it up. <laughs> Bob Myers, uh, before the game, he's on he's on ESPN NBA or whatever um, countdown, and he basically says that Steph uh, during the run during the the KD Warriors, Steph was not the best player on the team. KD was, and um, what are we doing? Just what are we? What what are we doing? What are we doing? Good what job. Doing, good Bob? job not getting. Uh, a coach hired with the commanders, Bob. Who did Good they get? Who did they work, get? Bro. Who did they get? Dan Quinn and, and, and Cliff Kingsbury, right? Yeah, they are cooked. It's not great. Not great. Um my God. I'm out. I'm out. I'm yeah. out on Bobby. Who had a, who's having a worse year? Who's having a better year? Sorry, Poole or Clay. I mean, Clay, Clay's on a team that's winning now. So Poole's kind of miserable. I mean, is he miserable? I don't know. Maybe he's happy. Seems like he doesn't care. I don't think he's happy, but <laughs> but Clay's got like Clay's got a cleaner path to redemption. Like he's just got to start hitting shots. Yeah. Whereas uh, where Jordan, he's got he's got a ways to go. He's got, he's got he's got um Kuzma. And that's about it. You know. <laughs> I kind of. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. All right. Next one. Next man up. We'll end it here. Okay. We're not getting. Oh wait, no, no, we got we got our guy. Izzo, oh. what's up, man? Maybe we don't. You're muted, Izzo. And it is loud tonight outside.
Can y'all hear me? Yeah, what's up? Yeah. My bad. Sorry, it's my first time rocking with y'all on this you good? platform. No, yeah. appreciate it. Don't worry about it. Um, so I, I, earlier y'all made a comment like trying to – I think one of y'all said, um, I wonder what, you know, what's changed with Draymond. And so I've been holding on to some information. For I, I, I didn't want to be a snitch, okay? But on New Year's Eve, I was out in Vegas with my wife, all right? We got a table at Dre's. All right, my 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 homie's brother is a is a is a promoter over there. He hooked it up, so we had a we had a table on the and and bear with me on the story, guys. And so we 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 got a table and on on the dance floor, Chris Brown was performing, and and ne- and one table down from us was Draymond, his wife, and a bunch of his homies. Okay, and 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 Draymond, I, I promise you, I looked over and I saw I saw, I looked, I was like, is that Draymond? I was like, isn't he suspended? He over here, and he having the time of his life. Okay, the the dude's energy. I I I, I mean, I don't know the man. I never seen him in person, but I I promise y'all, if in my mind, this is the happiest he's ever been in his life. Okay, and uh, and it's like know, me in Vegas too. I get it. Well, well, but let me tell y'all this though. You know what he was doing the entire time? Every time I looked over at him and I saw the biggest smile on his face, it was R and B music. Okay, he was singing every time an R and B song came on. Every time an R&B song came on, this guy was singing word for word. Usher, Chris Brown, Keisha Cole, everybody. Okay, he walked down. I, I, he was going to the bathroom. He walked past. He was dapping folks up. He dapped me up. I'm telling y'all, I think his playlist changed. That's what it is. His playlist changed. <laughs> he's at last this, night. Hey, hey, this, hey, this is a true story. I promise y'all, he was right there. And you know whose table was right next to him? Paul Pierce. And that's cool. very, that's believable. Hey, that's, that's, I believe hey, that. hey, it was it, no, it was a funny night, but but I I I I knew in my heart. I promise y'all, his energy was so good. I was like, yo, this dude's energy is so great. I was like, we gonna be all right. But I was like, I gotta save the story because I don't want people to get mad that he was in the club popping bottles while he was suspended. But I saved it for this time. That's- I'm telling y'all, it's R and B music. It's the playlist. He switched the playlist. He was listening to that NBA Young Boy probably previously. He switched it back up. So, <laughs> I'm telling y'all, I'm ready. I think we're gonna do it. Twenty-four and nine, possible. Twenty-three and nine. I think. I think we're gonna do it. I'm excited, guys. <laughs> and my last thing, can I just, can I just yeah, one, one yeah, thing? Yeah, I just yeah, no, I'm sorry, man. I know it's been a minute. With Kerr, okay. I get. Hey, we all get frustrated with him. We, but you know, I, 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 I really rock with Kerr. Okay. I know that we wouldn't be in this position, honestly, if it wasn't for him. You know, creating a system that was perfect for Steph, right? The only thing that frustrates me about the national discourse when it comes to coaches is when when we've got when we got players on the team like Kenyonis, Looney, GP2, like even Pods as a as a as a you know a undervalued rookie, right? Performing and producing, like it's never it's never look what Kerr and the coaching staff is doing. Yeah. With other coaches, any when it's when if if you put those players on any other team and they're pro- producing we're going to be having a different conversation about those coaches. And I'm just saying, I just would like the national discourse to give a little bit of love to, to Kerr as a coach. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it, it, it just doesn't really be happening. I feel like we always, everyone tries to discredit him. I just want to throw that out there. Anyways, I, I, I took a long I'm time. With you. Apologies. That was a call. But, but, that was a call of the no, season. I appreciate, so. appreciate you. I appreciate you. you, Izzo. Always All call right. in. All and right, you are right. correct. It's always uh, – the national discourse is always about like one person being a savior instead of uh, trying to look at like what someone could do collectively. Like, all right, Steve Kerr's not perfect, but you know, what Steve Kerr does. He brings it out of a lot of players and makes them them useful. And you know, that was uh, it's pointed at me. I deserve that one because I I I, I, <laughs> I no no seriously I I, I certainly should have. Uh, you know, talked about all the good stuff they did. That's the story. I, I'm producer Tim. I, you know, I don't know if he's still listening. He'll be listening at some point. But I'm gonna need that story clipped in on the timeline by tomorrow morning. I, I'm gonna need that one clipped and sent over. So uh, I'm gonna need to hear that one over and over again. It is a completely believable story. Uh, of course, Sam sources so. confirmed that it did happen. Sam was also there. I was Clutch there. was there. Steph was there. No, I'm kidding. That was great. I just, I that's a good way to end it, right? The Let's end it. Let's end it there. Let's go. Hey, hey. Super Bowl tomorrow. Let's go. We're going to be back after the Jazz game Monday night. Andy going to be hungover, either in the best hangover of his life. Yep. Or, or you know, yep. kind of grumpy. Yep. All right. Appreciate yep. everyone. All right.